Now, let's take a look at this week's Hitbound preview. It stars Woody Harrelson, barely seen in last March's Palmetto, Patricia Arquette, who at the same time was appearing alongside Ewan McGregor in Nightwatch, and Billy Crudup, the second actor to star in a docudrama about runner Steve Prefontaine in Without Limits. They'll be joined by the Big Lebowski's Sam Elliott for a western from the director of Mary Riley, Stephen Frears, called The High-Low Country. Mine's a true story. It started back when things were a good deal simpler than they are now. Hey, Pete! You half-brained dog, get all over here! Hanging with Big Boy taught me what fun was all about. <laughs> well, it's hard to count all this money, but it's $467. I'm getting wild like I promised. Chasing women, raising every kind of hell. It was all good times. What'd they do to you in the army? Take the cowboy right at you? And it started over, Mona. Ran in her day I got back. Started with a little small talk about the weather, and then... I want to run away with you someplace where no one can find us. Go on, get Mona back here. He's my best friend, and there ain't nothing I wouldn't do for him. Your friend is stealing a man's wife. One look at her, you know she's worth the risk. Hell, risk may be the best part of it. If somebody's gonna gun him down, I don't intend to let that happen. Times get hard. I see you boys coming begging. What about I stomp enough that I get a fertilized Texas? Les Burke is gonna kill Big Boy. None of them gonna have to kill Les. Big Boy! With that kind of love, nothing else matters. Not the law, not what people say, and not consideration for life or death. No! Hey! There ain't no backstabbing, gossiping bunch of yellow belly chickens gonna stop me. The High Low Country begins its Academy Award qualifying run on December 30th. But right now, let's get back into our countdown with this week's number five smash, The Water Boy. It cost only $23 million to produce, but has just become one of the 10 biggest films of the year. The hit comedy co-stars the craft's Farooza Balk as Adam Sandler's strong and streetwise gal pal, who falls for his tender, naive nature, much to the consternation of Mama Master Bates. What do you think if Bobby did play football, Mrs. Bishank? Well, I wouldn't think much of it at all. And to tell you the truth, I don't think much of you and all your snotty questions, Miss Valancourt. I'm quite disturbed to see that you're so interested in my boy. I'm very, very interested in your boy, Miss Boucher. Really? Mm. Well, did he tell you about how much his feet smell? No, no. He has to wear two pair of socks. Well, men are supposed to have sticky feet. Well, are men supposed to wear pajamas featuring a cartoon character by the name of Deputy Doll? Mama, please. Well, you know what? I happen to find Deputy Dog to be very, very sexy. Did he tell you about a little bedtime problem? Mama, I'm begging you, don't. That's his sheep back there. A baby is a little chicken. The baby is a cuddly chicken. Slipping a couple of spots to number four, Mark Mothersbaugh, the founding member of the 1980s new wave rock group Devo, whipped out an assortment of new songs that can be heard on the Rugrats movie. And at number three, Regina King, who played Cuba Gooding Jr.'s wife in Jerry Maguire, was personally picked by Will Smith to play his wife in Enemy of the State. And I, and I knew if I told you... Bobby that. had an affair with this woman. An affair. We went to a counselor for a year. And now you're standing there lying about even seeing her? You make me sick. Carla, I am smeared all over the newspapers for money laundering schemes, mob ties. I lost my job. I am asking you. I'm asking you to please just trust me on this Rachel Banks thing right now. How in God's name can I trust you? Bobby, I want you to leave. Carla, I'm telling you that this is all bullshit. I don't want to hear anything else. I don't want to hear anything else. I cannot think with you in my face. I want you to leave. What do you need to think I about? I'm telling you this bullshit. Just leave so I can think for me, OK? Just leave. Just. Go, Bobby, go! Is there a vacancy? Oh, we have 12, in fact. 
The only new release on this week's countdown comes in at number two. Director Gus Van Sant waited 10 years to do a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the Alfred Hitchcock classic. But it wasn't until after his Goodwill hunting gig gave him leverage that he was able to finally fulfill a fantasy that had everybody shaking their heads. Psycho. They're redoing Psycho? Why wouldn't they want to redo that one? If it was done once well, why do it again? Why in the world would anybody want to do this? I don't get it. You're messing with the Bible. Only someone as deranged and talented as Gus would think about doing this. It's like uh, Scientology. Yeah. It's, it's like people, some people are intrigued, some people are joining, some people are like totally like aghast to exist, afraid. If you wanted to remake a movie, you should remake a movie like Psycho. You could make it in color. You could cast modern day actors to play the characters. The only reason to actually do it again is to preserve all those things that made it really good. Is there any, any screenplay that has been remade? Very few, but Hamlet? Many times. I was supposing that people weren't really watching the film. I mean, there were film students watching it, and people caught it on, on television sometimes. Psycho? No, I never seen it. Never heard of it. Hitchcock, is that what you said? Awesome. <laughs> I never heard of the man. It hasn't the same currency in today's movie-going audiences. It's mainly uh, people who are uh, psychophiles. We want to watch movies that are made by people that are living with us, you know, in our day, you know, rather than. Um, a piece of history. Hi, Cass. How are you? Welcome. Nice to see Welcome. you. The way I feel about it is I'm very flattered, you know, and I know my father would be flattered that people want to remake his movies. Right. You know, I think it's wonderful. There are many, many outstanding filmmakers, but there's only a very few, which, which Gus is one of, that could get away with doing something like this. Thank you, Mr. Bates. Norman Bates. Vince was somebody that was completely conceivable as his character. I think of it as the centerpiece of the film. Here I am checking this girl into my motel from this movie that has happened way before and I saw as a kid. I've never even seen Psycho. I just wanted to work with Gus. The motions are essentially the same. Even if it's a little different, it's all right. I don't want it to be any different. You want it to be exactly the same? Yes! That's the thing. You get to add your personality to somebody else's behavior, and it's yeah. just yeah. wacky. We are appropriating it to make it a 90s film, you know, that's for sure. on it becomes more and more clear that it's not necessarily ordinary logic it's more the uncontrolled and symbolic logic of a nightmare holding on strong at number one for the second week in a row by earning almost twice as much as psycho the computer generated adventure a bug's life features the final performance of roddy mcdowell a pompous ant who serves on the colony's ruling council <laughs> Now stay calm. We are going around the leaf. Around the leaf? I, I I don't think we can do that. Oh nonsense! This is nothing compared to the twig of '93. That's it. That's it. Good. You're doing great. There you go. There you go. Watch my eyes. Don't look away. And here's the line again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Soil. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Oh, my, there's quite a gap, Mr. Soil. Shouldn't we tell the Queen? I don't think we need to involve the Queen in this. She's got enough on her plate already. Trading her daughter. Oh, yes, Princess Anna, the poor dear. And that concludes our look at the 10 biggest films in Hollywood today, as well as this week's show. But tune in again next time when we take our first glance at the 1999 movie season with At First Sight. Till then, I'm Robin Sachs, leaving you with the sights and sounds from the most popular picture 10 years ago this week. Twin.
Eve at 5.15, the movie Sister Act 2. Sister Mary Clarence is no ordinary nun. Whoopi Goldberg is back in the habit. Ow. And she's been rumbled. Sister Mary Fake, she's a Las Vegas showgirl. Oh. You are the perfect example of how a sow's ear can be turned into a silk purse. Whoopi Goldberg stars in Sister Act 2. Christmas Eve at 5.15 on ITV. And we've uh, a couple of movies on offer in the, the early hours tomorrow morning. 12.35, Tarzan the Magnificent with Gordon Scott. And then at 2.35, a little fantasy, Ernest Saves Christmas. It's now five to six.